So the People's Climate Vote is a really important survey because it was the largest ever survey of climate change attitudes around the world. It was an initiative from the United Nations Development Programme. It covered 50 countries and over half the global population and included 1.2 million respondents. So the People's Climate Vote is a unique survey and it was done by mobile phone game apps, as well as being extraordinarily large. It delivered invitations to people through mobile gaming apps like Temple Run, Words with Friends. And a lot of people use these things around the world and they're used to watching adverts for in-game credit. And this time, instead of getting an advert to watch, they were asked for 30 seconds of their time to share their views with the United Nations Development Programme and global policymakers. And so they answered our questions. And this way we could reach an awful lot of people in different countries, especially people that are usually hard to reach in surveys, uh, like young people. The survey included over half a million young people around the world. The headline finding from the survey, first key finding, was that 64% of people think climate change is a global emergency. Now that figure varied from country to country, it was a bit higher in rich countries, but in basically every country we surveyed where we could get estimates, there was a majority thinking that climate change was a global emergency. And we followed up that question with another question about the urgency with which people want action on climate change. And of the people who said there was a climate emergency, nearly three in five, 59%, said they wanted urgent action. So we asked about policies in six different areas, protecting people, nature, farms and food, energy, the economy, and transport. And with three different policies in each of six, six different areas, we had 18 different policies in total. And fully 97%, 97% said that they wanted at least one of those policies. And that was true even of people who said that they didn't think climate change was a global emergency. The key socio-demographic difference in the People's Climate Vote, as in other surveys about climate change, is education. So people who have higher levels of education are typically more climate conscious and were more likely to say that climate change is a global emergency and they supported more climate policies than people who have lower levels of education. In addition, there was also a gender gap on average around the world. In the People's Climate Vote, about 4% more men and boys thought climate change was a global emergency than women and girls. But there was a lot of difference between different countries on that. There were bigger gender gaps with men and boys much more likely than women and girls to think that climate change is a global emergency in some of the poorer and more gender traditional societies but in richer, higher income democracies, especially the United Kingdom, the US, Australia, Canada, there were big gender gaps in the other direction with women and girls much more likely to think climate change is a global emergency than men and boys. And finally, there was also differences in age groups between those who are under 18, 69% of them, said that climate change was a global emergency compared with 64% overall. And even though older age groups were slightly less likely to say climate change is a global emergency, still even the oldest age groups agreed that climate change was indeed a global emergency. The People's Climate Vote Initiative from the United Nations Development Programme is really useful for policymakers. And when the report came out, it reached people around the world 
It reached policymakers and activists around the world and politicians. And people could look at the data to see how people in their own countries think about climate change, what policies they want to see happen, and use that to inform their policy making debate. And also, when countries come together, like in the United Nations climate change conferences, people can understand what global opinion is and how there's a global demand for more action on climate change. High quality public opinion polling is really important for our general debate and understanding each other and understanding how we all think about issues in society at large. So when you see loud voices, angry voices in social media, it's not quite clear how many people they represent. Similarly, when you see a protest, it's not quite clear whether the protesters' concerns are concerns of a small minority or widely shared. High quality opinion polls, especially those where you have random sampling and everybody has an equal chance of being heard, those polls can be used to generate representative estimates of the whole society and you can understand what people on average think. And those polls also, because they're random sampling, include lots of different kinds of people and we can understand how different people think differently about the different issues. And that helps us understand each other and hopefully appreciate, appreciate that people have different opinions about different things.